Were the siblings in Gallus able to unleash their breakfast blend of brutality on the reigning champ and the increasingly chatty Austrian ring general? Raise your beverages. It's an NXT party. Support! No DQ! Welcome everybody to the NXT party for episode number 34 of NXT UK. I am your host, the Rated R reviewer Stefan Osborne, joined as always by the General Jerry Slaughter. Good evening wrestling fans. And tonight our special guest is the Birdman of Boston. We've got Owen Finch on the big screen. How you doing, Owen? I'm doing very well. I'm uh, the first ever dual champion on the Wrestling Rundown and the NXT No DQ team being the... We're getting with this guy. Uh, the champion and the Wrestling Rundown champion. And it's also my birthday today because it's you oh. know, 144 um, on March 15th at the time of we're recording this. So, you know. Awesome. Happy birthday, Owen. Way to spring it on us, but absolutely happy birthday, Owen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Birdman. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to, to you. you. Cheers. I don't I have a cake or ghost. candles or nothing like that, but... I was, I was about to say that's another first. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a podcast birthday wish. Yes. <laughs> this is so, birthday. before you sprung your birthday on us, I was going to ask, how did you like the show? Um, I really liked the show. There was uh, one match, in my opinion, I thought was kind of a dud. Not only a dud, but just really didn't care much about Bubble Gear. Oh, I, th I, think, I know, think I know which one you're talking about. I think I know, too, that you might be talking about. But anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, but I really enjoyed. But I really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm glad they're back in the UK because I haven't been on since they, you know, uh, been back. But because I feel like you know the crowds now move into it and stuff. I feel like too it wasn't because it was you know out of the UK. It was just in a wrestling you know, um, you know crowd that wanted to like go see access stuff. If they went anywhere else in the world, I think they would have been fine. Oh yeah. Anywhere else in America in a small venue like Jerry mentioned, maybe in Philadelphia, like uh Viking Hall. Yeah, like ECW. <coughs> but uh the fact that they were at a convention where one of the walls of this place opens into just a convention center. I mean it's like it's like it's like you see the nacho stand. <laughs> like if you've never been to a convention center, imagine just an airplane hangar mm -hmm. and then you have booths set up. Yeah. However, somebody wants to set up booths. I've seen all kinds of shit happen in convention centers. It's just space. Indoor space. That's what you're looking at. And uh, you're talking about people that come in and real wrestling fans that are like, cool, I get to see a show for three hours. Or maybe they plan their day because they knew what time they were taping this. Something. Yeah. You know, they file in and there's seats around two, thir two thirds, maybe a half of the setting. And then other than that, it's just people walking by leaning on the railing like ooh what's going on here yeah and they try to show you those people as little as possible yeah but well also uh maybe probably two people want to meet like you know like for example they probably want to meet triple h and stephanie mcmahon if they're there because yeah. uh they don't get many opportunities to meet them but they can watch nxc uk on the network and stuff so mm -hmm. it's probably those types of people that want to go and meet wrestlers they're never going to chance get a chance to meet ever again so well, talking about it being in the convention center, it wasn't just the crowd, just the acoustics of it kind of brings the show down a little bit. Mm -hmm. You can't hear anything going on. And some of the times when someone goes for a slap, you don't even really hear yeah, it. It doesn't resonate in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, all the, all the sound just like dissipates out that open. Spoiler open. alert, it resonates pretty loud here. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into today's show because as... As Owen said, we are back in the UK. This is the second show, I believe, back. In Coventry, UK, yeah. And uh, our next show, come to find out, is going to be in Glasgow, Scotland. So that's going to be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But we start the show even before the intro graphic, which Jerry noticed something cool about that. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. But we've got Johnny Saint and Sid Scala coming into the arena, and they get ambushed by somebody with a video camera and questions. Yes. But uh, basically they said, uh, tonight we've got the debut of Kaylee Ray, and we are going to have the Coffee Brothers versus Walter and Pete Dunne in the main event. Yeah. We knew this match was coming, didn't know it was going to be the main event, so somewhat there, there, there's, there's no way this wasn't going to be the main event. 
I mean, for real, yeah, but I've seen them do stupider things. Not really NXT UK, but in general. They, they do pretty decent booking, so... Uh, any any thoughts on Sid Scala and Johnny Saint here, Owen? Um, I thought it was pretty cool to see them back again, because we haven't seen them in a few weeks, because, you know, they were in Phoenix with Wii episodes, so... It, um, but it was kind of, you know, very run in the mill. It was kind of stuff we already known. I wonder if they taped this before, like, you know, last week when they actually announced this stuff and they just had this just in case they weren't going to announce it or something because it seems weird they would air this because um, it just seemed odd. Like, there was stuff we already knew. They didn't really announce anything new, so. Did um, they announce the debut of Kaylee Ray last week or did they just yes. show another video package? Uh, they uh, showed a video package, but it said, like, next week on it, you know, at the end of it, so. Yeah. Okay. So, there you go. I noticed, um, too, uh, I wonder if Sid Scala, too, is going to be the permanent GM at some point, because he does most of the talking than Johnny Saint is. I wonder if Johnny Saint's there for more name value than anything else, too. Th I would think that, about this before, though, but. In, in this case, Johnny Saint is probably there under a uh, contract as a actor. Yeah. And maybe you don't want to have to worry about paying Johnny Saint the money that he wants as a GM after his contract expires and instead you now shift that role at least in a uh, storyline to Sid Scala yeah at a much cheaper rate because he's Sid Scala I see something possibly happening to Johnny Saint whether something like he falls ill for a period of time and puts Sid Scala in complete control and that's when Sid goes all sorts of power crazy and I think that would be awesome to watch there's no way they're gonna use illness right now um if if any, anything uh, like it, someone he gets like attacked back like obviously not like really attacked but like they do the batista thing they did on wall where like he gets pu not pulled out or just gets, like laid out by gallus but doesn't actually show it or something and we find out aftermath it's gala like orchestrated it or something that, i would much rather see a scenario where they open up another nxt expansion like nxt germany or nxt australia nxt japan something uh, i would make more yeah. sense it was germany and uh, Johnny Saint gets tapped to go start that up because he did such a good job with NXT UK and he lives, leaves Sid Scala in charge while he's gone. Yeah. I would yeah. much rather see that type of scenario where he goes on I to could, bigger I, I could actually see him going off onto a different business venture. It's like, almost like, you take care of this place while I'm gone. <laughs> so. Like every time Michael thinks he's going to get a promotion and leave Dwight in charge. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Every time Dwight. I also wonder if they whip this crushed. off uh, of Defiant Wrestling um, because uh, I don't know the GM's name because I kind of just watched the clips. But Simon Miller is like the assistant. I don't know who started it first. If WWE did it first, or if, um, you know Defiant Wrestling did it first, because like Simon Miller is like the assistant to the GM there, and that's kind of the similar thing that Sid Scowl and Johnny Saint kind of have going on too. So. Well, pretty much anything that's been great in wrestling has been done already in some way, shape, yeah, or form. Yeah, probably. So. Yeah. So, our first match of the night, we get four. Love it. Uh, Flash Morgan Webster versus Wolfgang. And both of these guys needed to win here. Oh, yeah. Like both the, the, of these guys needed to win. It, it, was, it was a rubber match for a match that, like, you know, they hadn't even had yet. Like, basically, they're both on pretty massive losing streaks. And... and he just, they, they just need the like either one of them really needed to win badly more flash for webster than anything i think because they're keep on hyping him and hyping him and hyping him Making but i'm not in this match but i'm not seeing like the the potential that everybody else sees i'm sorry like he's got the great heel potential if they were to turn him that i believe but right now he's a face and but he's a cocky face and that's just not good He's not believable against Wolfgang to get a victory anyway. Exactly. Owen, what did you think about the match? Uh, I like the match. I, I agree with you. I think both guys needed the win, but when I saw uh, you know Gallus come out, I figured, okay, Gallus is going to get the win because I expect him to lose in the main event. So I think they're going to make him look strong in the beginning of the show to make him look like a threat. As for Flash Morgan Webster, I really like him, though, but I feel like ever since like NXT UK... Like, TV shows have started. He hasn't looked as impressive as I've seen him. And, like, one episode he was on on 205 Live in the, you know, the second United Kingdom Championship tournament. I wonder if it's just because he's in, you know, kind of like the, you know, um, 
small fish, big pond type of thing now because he's got like Don there, now Walter's there, Mustache Mountain's all there. And, you know, before it was just kind of a small amount of people mm -hmm. um, having to shine just in those two days. So he just kind of stood out based on the rest of them. So, um, and also in that episode of 205 Live, he got more shine than anybody else did. So it, it's really uh, weird because I think he is really good. Um, but, yeah, it's really weird. I just think uh, they don't really have anything for him right now. He feels like he's starting to become a job at this point. So. Uh, but, but, uh, he kind of is. I think it, I think he'd actually be better on 205 Live at this point. He like He's not really doing much of anything here except for losing. Even with uh, Flash Morgan Webster as a partner, he's still losing. Oh, you, you mean, mean, you mean, you mean uh, Mark Andrews? Yeah, sorry, Mark Andrews. Yeah. So uh, I've got a bunch of notes here. We've got Flash Morgan Webster trying his best to take down uh, Wolfgang, like, off his feet. Two suicidas, one to his back, which I don't know if I've ever seen that. That seems dangerous, but the barricades are real close to the ring here, so he just goes a foot and a half in the I, barricade. I'm, I'm, I'm right. wondering when some, like, you know, jerk's going to say, hey, suicide dive is, like, politically incorrect. Suicide is nothing to laugh at, and they're going to have to change the name. Uh, I'm sure they'd change the name and move on. And then he, d he <laughs> follows it up with a third, but over the top rope, forward uh, flip. Yep. Con Hero onto Wolfgang. Uh, then he gets him in the ring and he does a swan swanton to Wolfgang's back for a near fall. And then he goes for a 619 around the ring post, like running down the apron. Tiger fan kick, yeah. And he gets caught. And Wolfgang runs him back first into the ring post. And then uh, a little bit of a tussle on the outside. Then he picks him up and power bombs him into the ring post. And then onto the apron. Yeah. Rolls him back in the ring and then does his finisher, which is like, what did I call it? A twisting cradle neck breaker suplex. Yes. Yeah, I think they called it, uh, I forget exact, Nigel called the it. Caper the caper toss. toss. Yep, there it is. And we then, took notes. <laughs> and then some, some after match beat down by Wolfgang on uh, uh, the man with three names, Flash Morgan Webster. And the ref tries to break it up, and I guess he, he slaps the ref's hand or something. He slaps the ref's hand out of the way. And I'm, I'm automatically I'm thinking, it's like, oh my god. Like, if they're going to do this, they need to do it right. If, if he's going to if he's gonna go all out and get... Like the decision reversed, that'd be even better because then he would like lay the even bigger, more vicious uh, beat down of Flash Morgan Webster afterwards. So not only would Flash Morgan Webster get the W, he still gets beaten down in the process and makes Wolfgang even into an even stronger heel. This so is true. I, I think that would have worked out a little bit better, but Wolfgang ended up just walking away. So yep. So up next we've got Cassius Ono in a video package slash interview. Um, basically, he is now officially part of NXT UK. He has left NXT. They uh, showed his promo about hating the crowd, basically. I'm leaving. It's your fault. I'm gone. See you. Bye. And now he's in NXT UK as, I guess, the first ever American like signee. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's going to show the guys how to do British Strong Style better than they do, apparently. Which cool. Uh, I, I'm excited for this because he actually looked like he actually there's a light in him in this um in this promo that you haven't seen in like weeks. Like with his feud with Matt Riddle, he just looked like he was just there to just more or less make a paycheck and he looked more at ease and more at home in his match with Walter and Phoenix than he ever did his matches with Matt Riddle. He actually looked like he was having A having fun with it and B that he was actually, you know, somewhat a feasible opponent for Walter at that point. You think he's going to stop eating so many Chris Heroes and start <laughs> getting his shit together now? I, I think he's going to switch to baguettes. <laughs> now, Mr. Birdman, um, what do you think about Cassius Ono here? Is this like a character change to you? Um, I think this is interesting. Um, I think it makes sense for him to kind of transfer over. I think it's actually kind of something unique. Uh... I mean, I know we've probably seen with, like, you know, the main roster with Raw and SmackDown, but, you know, Cassius Ono actually has a reason to move over because there was really nothing left for him to do in NXT. Um, he's kind of feuded with everyone there was to feud with, and I really don't think he's really main roster material right now. Um, 
because I just think he fits the NXT umbrella um, better. And him going to NXT UK just kind of freshens up his character, and it gives him a chance to work with new people. I expect, um, you know, before the next TakeOver, whenever that's going to get announced, we're going to get a title match with him and Pete Dunne um, to kind of, you know, build up Pete Dunne. Because I still think his role is going to be the same, where he's going to be mainly there to put put people over, like the Tyler Bates, like the Trent Sevens and stuff like that. Because um, that's kind of what his role has kind of been. Um, but I'm very excited about this. I think he stands out, too, because he's the only American... Um, you know, in the U- in NXT UK, that's a male because uh, there was one. I don't even know if she signed to the NXT UK brand, but Diona Pavazzo was in NXT UK. Yeah, I don't know if that was just like two, like a two match stint though, because we haven't seen her. In but moments. much like Cassius Ono points out here, um, she did a lot of her work overseas, so she feels like she's you know part of uh, the European wrestling tradition, and yep. so does he. I did, I did like too how he brought up. Uh, how all these NXT UK guys talk about how they want to incorporate British Strong style, but yet they looked up to guys like Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart, and I looked up to, and I think you mentioned like actual like NXT UK guys, Bobby, or like guys that wrestled in the UK, mm-hmm. and he talked about how they were pretty much handed contracts based off something he started with. Uh, oh no, that was somebody else. That wasn't that was Noam Dar later on the show. So. Yeah, yeah, but. My, my other thing about this is it actually makes a little more sense for Cassius Ono to be over there. Because, yes, he is one of those purveyors of, like, the British Strong style. So, maybe he is in the twilight of his career, and maybe this is how he's going to end it. He's going to finish in NXT UK and then become a trainer at the facility. I can honestly see that happening. That's cool. So, up next we've got Kenny Williams and Amir Jordan. And they come out for a tag team match, and we're basically like, okay, who are they putting over here? Mm-hmm. Are we going to see Wild Boar and the Primate? Which we don't get to see for another week. The hunt does not begin until next week. Nope. We've got another jobber tag team, Tyson T-Bone and Saxon Huxley. So now we're like, hmm, who could possibly be winning this match? I, I, was, I, was, about, I was about to say, it's like, okay, so we get the first match that we really, like, it was like a do-or-die situation, and we have this one. So, but then now we remember because I'm like, do either of these teams? I know T Bone and Huxley don't have a win. No. Um, what about Williams and Jordan? They sure won enough, once. They've had one win. And that was the last match that they actually wrestled, I think, together as a tag team on the broadcast. So naturally, the announcers are putting it off as a hot streak. <laughs> so yeah, they win here. Um, what do you think about the match, Owen? Um. Just kind of was there for me. It was, <laughs> it was, I don't care. The only guy I really care about in this match is Kenny Williams, but in my opinion, I think he could be on 205 Live doing a whole lot of better things than teaming up with Amir Jordan. Oh, absolutely. Um, Amir Jordan, I don't really get the whole dancing thing and stuff. I never really get that when they try to win like a ninny and over and do that, so I don't really like Tyson Tebow, and I think he's just trash. And then, uh, I don't really know how I feel about Saxon Huggly because I've only seen him like a handful of times. So this match was there for me. Um, I was happy, I guess, that Kenny Williams and Amir Jordan got the win, but I don't really think they're going to get anything out of this. I just think they're going to... Actually, you know what they're probably going to do? They're probably going to put over, like, you know, the NXT UK tag champs in like a squash or like put over the... The hunt will begin with them next week. They're going to get destroyed. I just... This was fine, but it just was there for me. I don't really like matches that are just there that... It was just there. That's a, it's, it's a good point. Because well, you're making fun of the match more than anything. I don't know. I've got more notes for this match than I do uh, the women's match where Kaylee Ray debuts. The butts. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got Saxon Huxley. Okay. So. The ultrasonic inspector. So, yeah, I was kind of making fun of uh, Huxley and. Uh, <laughs> T Bone. Because, <laughs> okay, so th- they don't have moves. They just punch and kick and knees and this and that. But. <laughs> The moves they do do, it's like, how do we make a, a suplex look devastating? How do we make... In this case, Saxon does a scoop slam. Kind of a throw, <laughs> but still a scoop slam. And how do you make this look difficult? Uh, you, you suspend it. How do you suspend a, a scoop slam? Um, <laughs> you, you fail to get the person up for a proper scoop slam like four or five times. And I then thought do that it. was a... I thought that was a blotch, honestly. I did, I oh, I, we're pretty sure it was, too. <laughs> So he tries to get him up just for that part. Like, 
literally four or five times before finally succeeding at throwing him. And, and then he tags in T-Bone, who does a suplex, a vertical suplex. Vertical suplex. But he suspends it, and but not for very long. And it's like, these guys have no moves. In the meantime, Kenny, Kenny gets Williams. a hot tag, and he comes in like a fucking tornado. Um... Yes. Uh, a running bulldog into the turnbuckle was really cool. That I've was seen, really neat. I've seen people do that before, but and then he's got that wrecking ball drop kick on the out to the outside onto Huxley, but he holds on, skins the cat, and then him and Amir Jordan do a uh, stereo suicide dives to opposite sides of the ring to opposite yeah. guys. Crossfire. And then uh, Williams throws I think Huxley back in the ring and does that wheelbarrow face buster where he pauses and salutes. Before rolling through yep. and, and bringing him down with the face buster. And then Jordan goes up top with what they call the Swanton Bomb, Bomb Bay, Bay for the 1 2 3. Uh, Kenny Williams drop kicks uh, T Bone to the outside during the pinfall, keeping him from breaking it up. It was pretty good, man. I'm going to tell you this right now. This is my feel good moment of the night because, like, the second they get the pinfall, like, um, Amir Jordan just looks over at Williams, like, we won? We won, and they just put their fingers out like two, they two wins. Two wins. <laughs> they tried to say they're two and zero, though, they, but they're not two and zero. They no, they're lost, like, like two in a million. But it doesn't matter. I, I was but about to say they're still they're still in the negatives in a win column, but still. And they're on a streak, so there you go. Mm -hmm. One more win, and they'll be on fire. But I was happy the faces <laughs> won because I don't like. Uh, oh, because right now they're heating up. They're heating up. <laughs> That's I don't a, like Tyson. I don't like Tyson T Bone. I thought I honestly thought the guy got released. I thought I was kind of hoping when I saw him come out, my day was ruined. So <laughs> oh. this is good. they're going to get a win next week, and it's going to be an NBA Jam moment. Yes. <laughs> so up next, we've got an interview with Jenny, which honestly could have happened a, right after the interview with Tony Storm last week, where Jenny appears behind her. I, I, th I think it probably did. Um, basically, she says she's tired of hearing about Tony Storm. What she wants to focus on is the women's championship, and immediately, like, okay, but Tony Storm is the women's champion, and so you are focused on her, and like, yeah, completely you, you, contradicted you, yourself. I was about to say, you completely contradicted yeah. yourself. We have nothing else to hear from you. Today. Yeah, the rest of the interview was lost in the wind. Yeah, pretty much. What'd you think about it, Owen? It was, uh, it was fine. Um, <laughs> I, I kind of like that the uh, you know going with that view because that makes sense because even though like she was mad at Tony Storm you know um, I think like a month ago didn't she just do a promo like talking about how she took away all this stuff from her like the Mae Young Classic and won in the first round so that was a bit weird uh, I feel like the promo maybe should have been different but it was fine um, I do like this feud um, it just really seems like that it's just taking forever to get stuck to get going. Um, because uh, they're just going to do in the little promos and stuff, but I bet it's going to pick up. I don't think Janie's going to take the title from her, um, just because I don't think she's a strong enough here to do so. I think Tony Storm should kind of, you know, make that belt prestige just to kind of hold it. Not for long as Pete done, but, you know, maybe like about three to four months or so. Till the next takeover. Till the next, yeah. take, til the next UK takeover, yeah. However far off that is. So what about you, Jerry? I was like I said, I was I was with Jenny until she started contradicting herself. But even then, I'm like, you're still cute, so we're gonna go ahead and just we're, we're just gonna leave it at that. And you're eventually gonna beat Tony Storm, and you're eventually gonna become champion. But for right now, I can't stand the side of you. So up next, we've got a promo from Eddie Dennis. He's up in the stands of an empty arena somewhere. Maybe this arena. Who knows? Mm -hmm. I don't know why he starts talking about Legero. I can only assume that when he mentions he's going to have a match next week. It's going to be against Legero. Yeah. But for some That's reason, he's, guy, yeah. he singles out Legero. But he doesn't say that he's facing Legero. He just singles him out, starts talking about why he's going to make him the first of a long line of victims. He actually said he's going to face off against Legero that next week. Did he? Yeah, he did. You sure? I'm positive. That's why I make You guys out there, watch the show and tell me who's right because I didn't hear it at all. I just yeah. heard him bring him up out of nowhere. Owen, help me out here. He did say he's facing uh oh, fuck. Legero next week. <laughs> All right, so uh, that is why we have someone on the TV with us. <laughs> but, uh, I'm pretty sure he didn't say he was going to start with Legero. I thought he said he was the victims were going to continue with Legero because uh, that's the vibe I got from it. Because, well, uh, the last time we saw him, he was the victim. So I would say Legero needs to be what he considers first in a long yeah. line of them. 
here, here's the thing. I was really into the promo the entire time. The, him talking about, like, Liguero is just a victim of circumstance at this point. He's at the wrong place at the wrong time. And he's going to just steamroll over him. But then he actually gave himself a nickname. The Malevolent Welshman. Yeah. This is retarded, man. Yeah. He's, he's coming off of being gone forever because that's how bad Mastiff beat him. Of course, we haven't seen Mastiff <coughs> in a while either. No. Well, that's probably because... The last match he had was against Primate J. Melrose. So. I think these Phoenix shows, we haven't seen a lot of these guys because they weren't sent over to Phoenix. But uh, I also uh, don't know who's going to win that match next week because uh, Leguero has been kind of getting a push lately. So Right. Uh, Meanwhile, leguero has got two wins over Joseph Connors, and he's yeah. on a hot streak. And that's why I think Eddie Dennis and Joseph Connors will end up teaming up. That'd be cool. Maybe. Or Joseph Connors comes out and causes Liguero the victory. Yep. For his maybe own Joseph personal. Connors and uh, Cassius Ono. Because I did, put, I did pitch that before. So. Oh, with, with the uh, shiny yeah. toys breaking them? Breaking yeah. the shiny new toys yeah. together. Kind of takes it. Kind of takes Joseph Connors in as almost like a, a student, like mentor student kind of relationship. Now, next we get a Noam Dar in ring promo. Um, this is where he announces that he too has been signed to NXT UK. He is here to stay, and we kind of get a weird baby face to heel turn mid promo here. Mm-hmm. Um, because he talks about this is where we get the announcement that next week they'll be in Glasgow, Scotland. And uh, the crowd boos that, and he's like, Ooh, "Oh, boo!" He's, he's talking so... about a place that's not here. <laughs> that was so great. That was brilliant. And then he talks about how he's eleven out of ten. I guess is his thing. And uh, NXT has been pretty, pretty, pretty good. <laughs> and uh, they they they've been four out of ten at best, though. And they need no Amdar, and the Scottish Supernova is going to shine bright. Blah blah blah. <laughs> He mentions a few superstars that have gone over to 205 Live and gotten their asses handed to him and sent back. I think Flash, Flash Morgan, Morgan Webster, Webster and Kenny Williams, I believe. And then he talks about Mark Andrews doing the same, getting his head beaten in by uh, the champ, I guess. It's skateboarding his way to the back. <laughs> and this brings out Manders, who takes exception to it and gets in his face and Noam Dar kind of leaves. Oh, he gets he gets kicked in the head and he leaves. Yeah, <laughs> but let that make anybody leave. It's, it's, well, it's it's, it's 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 kind of a common courtesy. You kick somebody in the head and they leave. He goes for the handshake and then goes for the the fake out punch. Mandrews ducks, catches him with a kick, and then Noam Dar leaves because mm-hmm. I guess this is his first feud. And I'm betting Noam Dar wins because Mandrews is on another of those uh, famous losing streaks. What do you think about this, uh, Owen? I like this promo, uh, and I even like how he brought up how he's pretty much the reason that there was an NXT UK division, because he was, I don't want to, he tried to make it seem like he was tearing it up on Raw in 205 Live. He wasn't tearing it up on Raw, I'm going to tell you that much. But, yeah. you know, he's a heel, you know, he's allowed to. I, I remember say, those. He's a heel, though, he's allowed to say that type of stuff, though, because that's what heels, they're arrogant, so. Um, but I uh, really like the heel tone. I like that he's like going to be fully part of the division now because, uh, you know, um, there's really nothing for him to do on 205 Live, really, and it's a nice, you know, name you can add to NXT UK. So I don't really know if he's going to be as big of a, uh, um, as a stuff, like as big a part of 205 Live now because, um, you know, he just got his head driven through the barricade by Tony Nese. So I think he's kind of done on 205 Live. I think that was like his white off angle. So, Pretty much. Um. And I even liked, you know, uh, how he took jabs at all of the uh, NXT UK guys. I think Mark Andrews is a good place for him to start a feud. It is interesting, though, that he's going to be a heel in his hometown because uh, it's typically not the easiest thing to get food in your hometown. But, like, it never happens. So um, I, th- I thought he would be a baby face. Um, but I guess they're going to put him as a heel, which I actually kind of think he's a better heel anyways. I think when he's, a, he's just so brash and arrogant, I think, in real life, that I think uh, he should be a heel in you know, less one, so, uh... I just look at the uh, guy I want to punch him in the face. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, his heel one didn't go very well the first time, but there was, you know, booking and writing issues that led to that, so... Um, I feel like, you know, he's in a better place where he's not gonna have Alicia Fox there now, so... Yeah. That is true. Here, here's my other thing with this, so I'm gonna make it real quick so we can get on with the rest of the program. But, um... 
the fact that like he's there now and we also have Mark Andrew, that's even more talent that could be made toward like put towards the European Championship. Absolutely, we need a mid card title. It's like we we have like the the uh, you know the heavyweight title and that's great, but we need the mid we we need that middle title. And what there. better place to bring back the European Championship than NXT UK? Come yep. on. So uh, bring it back. <laughs> up next, we've got Zaya Brookside in an interview somewhere in a training facility. I assume. Yeah, it looked like it was in the, uh, the performance center. And then she hates bullies, and the ultimate bully is Rhea Ripley, and so Rhea Ripley and Zia Brookside are officially in a feud. Yep. And any other notes, Jer? Nope. Any other notes? <laughs> <on that? laughs> um, no, it was fine. Um, <laughs> gonna be it's kind of a downgrade for Rhea Ripley to go into a feud with Zia Brookside, in my opinion, but. Um, oh, but Brookside was dropping her family name here, there, and everywhere. Oh man. yeah. She's yeah, but uh, she was just fighting for the. No, I'm. But Rhea Ripley was just fighting for the belt, and it feels like it's kind of. I know. Oh, we 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 totally agree with that. It's the fact that like um, yeah, Zia Brookside set her goals a little too high, like yeah. you know, going into this thing. I I I I love the fact that she like hates bullies and everything, but there's bullies that are a little bit smaller and less established than um Rhea Ripley at this point, and that she needs to be focusing on. And not going after the mosh pit kid at this There's point. also real bullies out there and not people that are paid to act like bullies because that's <laughs> what wrestlers are. <laughs> real wrestlers are just, that's the shit that they do is always stuff that, like, it's it's an act, folks. Like, yes. well, you, should, you um, should not bring the idea of bullies into wrestling because it is just, like, they're all bullies. It's part of the act. Like, yeah. it yeah. makes no sense what? to talk about one person as a bully. Let her know. Me and my friends have this discussion about bullies all the time. We also talk about that um, it feels like there's like an age limit sometimes in bullying because we talk about like you can't really be bullied like over the age of like maybe you know twenty like twenty three maybe because uh, it gets to the point where what is it you know I feel like there should be an age limit because uh, uh, but we you know that's like a different video. To there's talk about all that kinds thing. of. Uh, just psychosocial bullying that that can occur at any age. Oh yeah. But for the most part, I think once you get up to your late twenties, early thirties, you start getting to a point to where you don't give a fuck anymore. Yeah. Like bullying doesn't work. Like like psychological bullying doesn't work anymore. Even because like you just don't care anymore. You're like fuck you. Because you're because like, you're, you're able to drink. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, uh, I feel like too. That's also like a tough thing to say because of. Uh, social media now and stuff too because oh yeah that's what hardens pick. people but people that were seriously hardened in school before you know all the anti-bullying stuff they look yeah. at the social media stuff and they're like yeah whatever Pretty bunch much. of babies but yeah. then you've got people that have been coddled for a lot of their life because there's more awareness of how treating people can affect them as adults and uh then they get to a place like the internet where there's no filter there's no ability for somebody to step in and mediate, and they can't handle bullying on a technological level, and it gets very muddled. Yeah. But to bring that into wrestling is stupid. It's yeah. stupid, because all heels are bullies. Like, this is lazy writing, and I never thought I would say that about, about NXT, NXT UK. UK. Or NXT in yeah. general. But yeah, this is lazy writing. I'm hoping this ends in a squash match where Rhea Ripley just dominates and moves on. Exactly. Here, here. They leave behind the bullying bullshit. So up next, we've got a video package for the Wild Boar and the Primate, Jay Melrose. The Hunt. The Hunt begins up next week, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, next so we'll week. see him next week. I, I, I'm really hoping they get the win, uh, which I think they will since they got the video package. And maybe they'll actually like because I think I don't think Hitchman has won a match since he's been there. Uh, and I yeah, he might have won. won. Like a, he won like an enhancement match, but I don't remember who he beat. Yeah, he won like one. Oh, that, that's right. Because what was it? enhancement talents versus enhancement talents? We're like, okay, he's got to win this one. Right, and he did. So up next, our third match of the night, we've got Candy Floss versus the debuting Kaylee Ray. And who didn't know Kaylee Ray was going to win? For me, this was the filler match. Yeah. Um, actually, 
the the tag match for me was the the kind of like the filler match. You know, it kind of progressed Zach Williams and um. That match was boring for two thirds of it, but then took off once uh, the Kenny Williams got the yeah, hot was, tag. I said Zach Williams. I got so, Zach Gibson on the brain because later. So this this match for me, I have no notes till the end. Um, we've got Kaylee Ray with a dude. She she hits this sick chop. Yeah. Onto uh, Candy Floss, follows it with a super kick that they call a crescent kick, and then a gory bomb for the pinfall. Mm -hmm. Bing bam boom. Kaylee Ray wins her debut match. Surprise! Fucking surprise! What did you think about this, Owen? Uh, it was fine. Um, this wasn't really like the cool off match for me because this match kind of had a purpose because it was a squash match and stuff, and you're building up Kaylee Ray for like her first big appearance. Um, the tag match was just filler to me because I don't care about anybody in that match but Kenny Williams. So, um, and then uh, I'm gonna keep saying it until like it happens. I really want to see Candy Floss and Zion Brookside become a tag team because they just fit so well together. Like they have the same gimmick. <laughs> they, they they both have that bubbly personality and they also pretty much look alike too. I mean, for God's sake, she like they they matched. I hear that out of Jerry every time we see either one of them. Yeah, like I said tonight too. So yeah, I guess I just repeat successfully what you just I'm all, said. I'm all for it, but I mean, you're just stating the obvious here. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they know that these two belong together as a tag team, but until they either extend the tag team titles to NXT UK, there's really no point. Because um, well, anytime it's you it's have a NXT. tag team match, it's usually because two of the opponents are having a feud and the other two opponents are having a feud, some shit like that. Mm -hmm. Or it's a, a an enhancement match for two people on one side. Well, I think the women's tag team titles are transferable because um, NXT UK and NXT kind of coincide with each other a little bit. So I think they can, you know... They're probably not going to do it in, like, the UK because, uh, you know, it's a... Because Bailey and Sasha Banks had to fly to the UK and then fly back. They well, these chicks you know, are 19 years old. I think they've got nothing but time. Oh yeah. yeah. So. But, uh, uh, yeah, I um I liked Kaylee Ray too. I, I got my answer too because I wasn't sure if she was supposed to be a face or a heel from the vignettes, and I guess she's gonna be a heel. Mm -hmm. I kind of hope she's gonna be like a hardcore like wrestler, like uh, Jimmy Havoc is in um, MLW, but probably like a lesser version of him because uh, he's he, he doesn't fit like the WWE PG mode and stuff. Which I hope he goes to NXT UK someday, Jimmy Havoc, because he's. From the UK, so. What I really, what I also really like about this is the fact that um, if she is going to be heel, your um, four, four person Gallus team actually may have gotten her women, woman. So. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, it makes sense. Mhm. Mm so uh, up next, we've got a selfie promo from Mustache Mountain, which. If you watch NXT this week before you watch NXT UK, which I think is the order that they broadcast them in, Mustache Mountain's got a skewed timeline because they're talking about still having the match that already occurred in the semifinals of the Dusty Rhodes Classic against, uh, who is well, it? Well, uh, NXT, NXT UK um, airs 3 p.m. Eastern Time, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah it does. Forgotten Sons. Yeah, so it airs 3 p.m. Eastern. Oh, time. so yeah, technically. Yeah. But still. Yeah, but, but at this point, like... The we, order we watch it in yeah. didn't make any fucking sense. Yeah. So, uh, what did you think about the promo, Jerry? I thought it was great because, like, we f we're finally... St Anytime Trent Seven talks, I like listening to the guy. I don't like his in-ring work. I really don't. But I like watching him talk because he's got that, like, sage-like, you know... Wisdom to him, and he's got that really swarmy, swarmy, the, yeah, swar, swarmy, swarmy, swarm, swarm. But he's got swarm. he's got that um kind of humor to him, and you got Ty Tyler Bate actually not call, call out Zach Gibson because Zach Gibson's got a broken toe, and but he calls out uh, Seth Green. Hmm. <laughs> he called out James Drake, and that, now we're going to begin that match probably within the next couple weeks, it looks like, because he's going to ask Saint for it. Yeah, maybe maybe in two weeks. We've got a pretty loaded card so far for next you know, week. No, they already. announced it uh, next week. Sid Scalo and Johnny Saint announced it for next week in the main event. Oh. Really? Cool. Yeah, he must have skipped it or something. Well, I actually yeah, watched this on, the, uh, on WWE, like, this YouTube channel. Like, you can watch the full version of it, and it's actually pretty funny in the beginning because... Uh, they were doing like test checks and stuff, wondering if they were actually recording. It was pretty funny. Cool. Uh, and yeah, um, I like. Oh, that's right. They said they were going to stop that live stream because like they had so many flubs at the beginning. 
<laughs> I always like to make the joke to uh, how, like, you know, Mustache Mountain must be like wizards or something because they can, like, go be in the UK if this is supposed live and then go all the way to Florida within the span of five hours. It's pretty <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a brutal plane ride right there. Mach 3, baby. <laughs> but they must have to, like, take a rocket chip, actually, to get there. Something. Support! No DQ! We are on to the main event. Tonight we've got the Coffee Brothers representing Gallus. We've got Joe and Mark versus Walter and Pete Dunn, the Walter. unlikely tag team. Um, mostly because at this point, who doesn't think Walter wants to beat up Pete Dunn and take the NXT, or sorry, the WWE UK Championship? Ooh. Uh, I have got a page worth of notes on this match because it was like a 20 minute fucking match. But before I break down all those spots, uh, Owen, what did you think about the main event? I really liked the main event. Um, my only criticism, I guess, is uh, I wish the Coffee Brothers could have gotten maybe a little more offense than they did, because I don't think they got much of the offense in this match. I think they uh, got, like, you know, about maybe 30% of the offense in the match, but I still would have liked it. Um, and... Uh, I really liked how it's like slow tension to building up to that eventual WWE United Kingdom Championship match between Pete Dunne and Walter. I even like how you're probably gonna break this spot down where they did the uh, like their um, like suplexes like on the apron simultaneously, but like looked at each other with disdain as they did it. And even uh, like the symbolic of you know fear that Pete Dunne had in his eyes um, when Walter got the win and. Uh, showing like he, this guy could possibly take my championship and even like when he stomped on his title and prevented, prevented him from getting it um i did think the coffee brothers looked pretty strong in this match though i just wish they would have gotten a little bit more offense i um i think joe coffee looks good and i expect him all coffee to eat the fall because uh he's like joe coffee's i think a little higher up on the totem pole because he was just in the main event of the first takeover of the brand so yeah i, I like the main event i really enjoyed it um, it was, uh, really fun to, to watch. It was pretty cool to watch Pete Dunne and Walter work together because, uh, they're like enemies with each other and stuff. Mm -hmm. Something I did notice too, um, that it's a little off topic, but I didn't know the commentators were actually in the arena. I thought they were, uh, you know, like at Stanford actually like taping commentary over it, but they actually did like a bit with them there. I thought that was kind of weird. Yeah, you can actually tell the difference in the sound quality of the announcers when they're in a studio recording over versus when they're in there live. Um, sometimes it's subtle, but usually you can tell the difference. And for the most part, um, they do the commentary there. There are spots in the show where they'll say something that it's done in a studio and you can tell, but not a lot. Um, Jer, what do you think about this main event? It was pretty much what I thought it was going to be, and, but like um, it could have gone two ways. One, Pete Dunne and um, Walter would have gotten along at all, and they would have been doing that begrudging tag thing, where like they would just kind of slap each other or whatnot to let each other in the ring. But it was very casual tags in and out, and a bunch of the um, anything you can do, I can do better, like maneuvers. Uh, at one point, you had Pete Dunne do do his. Um, the Baszler stomp, and then later he had Walter do the Baszler stomp, to which Dunn just kind of shrugged. But, but and that's a, that's something else I love about Pete Dunn. He's so great in the ring, but at the same time, he's such an asshole. <laughs> it, 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 like he's so laid back about everything he does. It, it's just great. And like uh, like like Owen said, like um, Gallus didn't get a lot of offense in this match. When they did, it was like just uh, and Pete Dunn in the corner. Because, let's just face it, Walter's almost indestructible, it seems like. I mean, Walter had some spots where he was... Yeah, he, 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 had, he, had some, he had some issues, but they didn't do what you said what they should do, which was um, attack his legs, bring him down. Because if you, if you attack his legs and you attack his back, you, there's less risk of being what, the victim of, what what was it called? The, um, that powerbomb movie. Oh, <laughs> Numer Eins. Numer Eins. But I, w I actually saw the match ending differently in my head, but I don't want to, like, get into that just yet. I want to hear everything that led up to, and, the uh, you know, finish to the match. All right, let's go for the breakdown. As yep. you mentioned, um, does, Dunn does the Baszler stomp. I believe this was on to Mark. Yep. And uh, Walter wants the tag, so he tags him in. Walter comes in, 
and he duplicates the Baszler stomp. Yeah. And then uh, Mark ends up, I think, uh, chopping Walter in the corner, pisses him off. Walter knows so. <laughs> and then uh, Mark starts dancing around the ring to get away from him, and Joe tags in. So he comes in, and uh, Pete Dunne wants the tag. So he gets the tag, and he does the fucking Baszler stomp. And then Walter wants the tag, so he gets a tag, and instead of duplicating the Baszler stomp, what I have called the Jesus chop. So when he hits Jesus. this chop, and I think it was Joe, mm -hmm. Jerry was like, Jesus! <laughs> and then Mark comes in, and he catches a chop, and it's the same thing. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Holy cow. Yep. And then, uh... We got those uh, stereo apron suplexes where uh, Dunn does the X-plex and Walter does the throwing uh, belly-to-back suplex onto the apron. And then, uh, let's see, Dunn does a middle middle rope drop kick, but he hits Joe in the knee. Sends him flipping. Fli it sends him flipping forward onto his back. That was pretty awesome. Uh, Walter gets the hot tag after Dunn gets worked over. Like... He, he goes for the running off the rope spot, and he goes goes to jump over, I think it was Mark, and uh, Joe catches him, or maybe it's the other way around, catches him with a German, a deadlift German, when he goes for that jump over. Mm -hmm. And this get, puts Dunn down, but then Walter gets the hot tag, and he does a bunch of shit, including a hell of a kick in the corner, and then a seated senton that gets him a near fall. Uh, just a running seated senton. He didn't yeah. come off the ropes or nothing. Uh... Just onto, uh, I think it was Mark's chest. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Joe hits Walter with a German. How that happened, I don't know. But he, he hits him with a German. And he gets up and he goes for that all raw best for the bells. But Walter counters into an exploder suplex for a near fall. And then uh, Pete comes in and counters a springboard attack by somebody with a fucking forearm. It was just wicked looking. And then he comes off, uh, goes out to the apron, comes off the middle with a moonsault to both guys on the outside. And then he gets back in the ring and somehow he ends up getting taken out with a Polish hammer by Mark. And then Walter gets the blind tag, comes in, drop kick to Mark into the corner, butterfly suplex for a near fall. And then Walter puts Mark in a Boston Crab. This is where, uh... Dunn goes to take out Joe on the outside, but Joe catches him, throws him into the barricade. He gets in and he lays in some chops on Walter while he's got the Boston Crab on. Walter no selling the chops. Screams at him. Then he gets up, um, ends up following Mark up to the top rope, but Joe catches Walter, Walter and gets him in a uh, electric chair. Best I can call this is a doomsday hair grab because uh, <laughs> Mark comes off the top and he doesn't really touch much of uh walter walter other than to kind of rub his head he's like nuggy 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 not even a nuggy <laughs> just a hair grab uh but dunn breaks up the pin attempt uh let's see joe gets or joe is on the apron and mark gets put in the sleeper by walter so joe reaches in and pulls mark towards the ropes trying to help him out of this sleeper but gets pulled over the ropes like dangling like a fucking uh like a, a draping something, yeah. draping fill in the blank. But he, he comes back down and uh, he turns around. And now Mark is grabbing him around the waist while Walter is grabbing Mark around the waist. And we see what's coming here. Mm -hmm. Mark or Joe grabs the ropes, though, to try and prevent it. And Pete Dunn gets up on the apron and pulls Mark's hand up and does that wishbone, which... Jolts the pain, and then Walter comes in with a double Austrian suplex. <laughs> we call it the German suplex by him, the Austrian suplex. Mm -hmm. But yeah, a double German. Fucking wow. And then... God, where the fuck am I? Uh, let's see. We get a dueling Kimura lock and sleeper by uh, Pete Dunn and Walter. But then Joe picks up uh, Pete, Pete Dunn. Dunn out of the Kimura lock into a suplex and lands him on Walter. And then this is where Joe brings the title into the ring, but Dunn ends up kicking him out of the ring, title drops, and then uh, we get a stare down between Pete Dunn and Walter, and then Mark grabs the title and goes to hit Pete Dunn in the back of the head, 
but Walter goes for a, kit, a big boot and Dunn just barely dodges out of the way. Mark catches the big boot, then gets the uh, power bomb number one, what I call the Nummer Eins, which is number one in German. And one, Not two, Austrian. three. <laughs> yes. There's no such thing as Austrian as a language. But then as um, Owen alluded to, like, um, like Pete Dunn went to go pick up his belt, Walter steps right on it. Well, it just so happens the belt gets laid out in the middle. Right of the ring, in the middle of the ring. perfectly. And we get a stare down between Pete Dunne and Walter right over top of the belt. And then a pose down. And then uh, Pete Dunne goes to pick up his belt and Walter steps on it. Prevents him from picking it up. And when Pete Dunne stands back up like, I'm about to punch your face in, Walter reaches down, picks up the belt, takes a good hard look at it, and then hands it to Pete Dunne and leaves. Mm-hmm. And Pete Dunne's standing there, and now his music's playing. And that's the end of the main event. That's the end of the show. Um, we didn't get a confrontation, really. No blows were thrown. But this is coming. It's simmering. And uh, that brings us to the end of the main event. Any final thoughts before we rate this some bitch? <laughs> I even liked uh, when they, uh, after they even did the suplexes, uh, they like did their taunts to each other, like biting each other's face. I thought that was awesome. Um and I, I don't know if you mentioned it, but uh, there was a botch in this match where, uh, like, uh, they do the typical spot where, like, the guy that's smaller tries to pull the ropes down. Yeah. And, like, Walter's supposed to go out of the win, but I think there was a mess up there because Walter actually, like, hit the turnbuckle, like, eye first. No, he hit like the that. rope. And they played it off yeah. like he hit the rope hard on his face and he rolled over into the corner. And I guess he figured that was a decent enough spot for him to hang out for a while. Well, Without looking like he totally botched it. Well, I was about to say he had he had the blood all over his face for the rest of the match to actually like show that he had botched it. So it was a reminder. And then, uh, I even like how Nigel McGuinness. It was a great call by him. Even questioned, did you know was Walter aiming for Pete Dunne or was he going to save Pete Dunne from getting hit with the belt? So oh, it was I obvious kind of by the second camera angle that he <laughs> saw the the belt smash coming and he was protecting Pete Dunne, but. If he yeah. had caught Pete Dunne in the crossfire, I don't think he would have cared. No. Yeah. And at one point, Vic Joseph actually said that uh, Joe Coffey was being pinned, and it was Mark Coffey. So, so that was yeah. in, towards the middle of the match. I'm like, oh, Vic Joseph, you silly bastard. <laughs> you ignorant <laughs> slut. <laughs> you ignorant slut, Vic Joseph. <laughs> so, here on the NXT party, we rate the main event. Using good old fashioned NXT. <laughs> noticed our new mugs. These, thanks to Jerry, care of Steph. Thank you, Steph. She got these at Epcot. It's mm -hmm. amazing. So, around these parts, we rate out of five spots of NXT. And as our special guest, Owen, you get to go first. How do you rate this main event? Um, I didn't think it was a great made event with the match and I also like you know the setup of Pete Dunne and uh, Walter and you know if we kind of use this to kind of grade the show too I thought it kind of came off on the back foot of a kind of you know in between show while some of the stuff was good but it was uh, um, it was kind of getting to the kind of point where it was getting to be an episode where you could kind of skip it and not really miss anything up until the main event so I'll give it four, st well, four spots of tea Four spots of tea. It's pretty good. Yeah. What about you, Jerry? I'm with him on the, the rating is of four spots, but what really impressed me in this match, and I guess it's one of these things we just kind of shoved under the rug a little bit, Mark Coffey was actually very, very impressive in this match. He has put on solid performances in the matches that he's had. His singles match with um, Walter was actually really good as well, but... Um, yeah, with the the main event, the main event was great. It was exactly what we thought it was going to be, but my finish that I would have had for the match would have had um, Joe Coffey landing his um, all-raw Vestra Bell to Walter's chest and Walter being completely unfazed by it, but Joe Coffey, like, you know, started spinning around with his arm hurting and Pete Dunne put, locking in the arm bar and then doing the wishbone to the fingers while still staring down Walter at the same time. Either way, either way, the the match could end up beautifully that way or the other way. But either way, we knew Walter and Pete Dunne were going to win this match. But coming off of the show, where it's like it, we had different stories being built, we had saw some extra promos. 
the Zaya Brookside's thing was just about pointless, and it, the, so will the match be, sorry. <laughs> but performance-wise and everything out, out of this main event, I'm going to give it four. I think it was good but not great. It wasn't the best story they could tell building up the heat between uh, Walter and Pete Dunne. It's not also not the best story they could tell uh, building the heat between either of those guys and Gallus. Sadly, they could have taken notes from a tag match from last night in NXT. Um, yeah, I, 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 watching the Dusty Rhodes Classic six matches deep so far, mm -hmm. we've got one more to go, and then the tag or the tag title match at Takeover. Like <laughs> this, this tag team match has a lot to live up for to for me yeah. over the last few weeks, and I just can't I can't agree with four spots. I'm gonna go three and three quarters. Because it was really good, but it wasn't I figured, I figured that's what you were going to go with. I knew, like, I saw the wheels turning. It's like, it was it was good, but it just wasn't great. Even the story of the, I can do this better than you or whatever, it wasn't it wasn't throughout the match necessarily. And so, just, so, so it was really, really, eh, really, really It was good. okay. It was okay. It was, <laughs> but I wouldn't put it in four stars or better. So I'm going to top it out at three and three quarters. See no M Dar, you see what you've done to him? I'm gonna lowball it this <laughs> oh, that was, No M promo was awful. Honestly. I, I I was not really a big other than the spot where he made fun of the crowd booing the fact yeah, that he talked I, about After that I kinda tuned there. out myself until you started like started name dropping because I knew uh, somebody was gonna come out. This show was okay. I mean I, I think it was skippable up until that point. Um, but even still three and three quarters. So let's get into the plugs. Owen, where can we find you? So you can find me on my three YouTube channels. First one being CM Brothers. Uh, me and my cousin occasionally do wrestling predictions where he tries to predict um, the, the wrestling product. Um, when he's never watched it before, he's you know never predicted well. So uh, <laughs> Jerry's kind of pulling a U, except uh, he's never watched any type of wrestling before. <sighs> Um, yeah. Um, let's see how he does on NXT, though. He might do a uh, low, let's, low let's, there, uh, Owen. <laughs> and then uh, Owen the Talkinator, you can check me out there. By the time you see this on NoDQ.com, uh, if you watch it that way, you should get to see Breaking Bad season four, episode nine review. If all goes according to plan, but we'll see. Um, and then obviously, Western Fortune forty four. Me and Noah. Um, we're going to be doing the, well, possibly if you can do it, uh, Sunday, the wrestling rundown and James the Archangel, if he's feeling better. Um, and then obviously, uh, we're going to do the retro wrestling review series. Um, again, we have a crap load of those coming out. It's going to be, um, WrestleMania 23, um, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, the first one. And then obviously either WrestleMania 219, cause we got to do a bad show so we can see what a bad WrestleMania looks like, <laughs> you know, uh, you know this year's WrestleMania, so we can really judge it. So, got some stuff planned um, coming up. MLW reviews, Lucha Underground Season 2 reviews, so a lot of stuff uh, in the works. Awesome. And then also, you can check me out on Instagram, fan showing, because we got uh, live Instagram videos that will be posted every day during March Madness, so that way I can have my sports type of fun since I don't watch basketball. So it's going to be March 19th to whatever. I think it's like April, 29th, April 19th. Like whenever March Madness ends, so, so there check, you go. That's everything. So check out Owen on his channels. He is the current NX Team Predictions Champion. Um, and the Western Rundown Predictions Champion too. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> dual, dual champion. So speaking of which, I am the former No DQ uh, Team No DQ Predictions Champion. Yeah, I didn't do so good with the uh, intro match or the first match of the night, and I didn't, I didn't get uh, Black and Ricochet to win the Raw Tag Team Titles. Um, I was, that was hoping just that would put thinking. me a point ahead of everybody, but instead it put me a point behind of everybody that picked all the. Obvious. I, I was gonna say that was, that was your ballsy move for that night, and it just kind of kicked you in them. <laughs> yeah, I still wouldn't have won because I didn't get the prediction for the first match. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have thought it'd be The Miz and Shane anyway, so there's no way I would have gotten that right anyway. Yeah. But, if you'd like to be up on the big screen and join us for a spot of NXT, 
and help us review a future episode of NXT UK, you can find me on Twitter. Just go to nodq.com slash Stefan. That's S-T-E-F-A-N. She's not pointing to it. <laughs> and if you just want to look me up on Twitter, it's at Stefan R. Osborne, O-S-B-O-R-N-E. As always, the R stands for Restricted. You can also find this gentleman on Twitter. At no DQ General and also on my Facebook group Armbar, all capital, A-R-M-B-A-R, exclamation point. And go ahead and find us there. We'll go ahead and get you in there. We have a bunch of memes, different discussions going on all around the wrestling world, really. So, And, and I've also started doing Armbar Radio here yes. and there. So. And if you like our videos, you should click the like button that's underneath me. If you like all of our videos, you should click the subscribe button that's underneath Jerry. So like, subscribe, share as well if you know anybody that likes wrestling and especially NXT UK or NXT. We do What's NXT um, yesterday that or, came out. Or the word fuck. Sometimes we say fuck. <laughs> yeah, we say fuck a lot. That's why it's restricted. Mm -hmm. uh, share it with your friends. Uh, if you'd like to get these videos half a day early, we post them first to our channel, After Match Wrestling. That's all one word, A-F-T-E-R-M-A-T-C-H, After Match Wrestling. And uh, we are on the drive to 100 subscribers. We got a new one today. We're at 56. Yes, one at a time. One at a time. At 100 subscribers, we are going to start doing, at the very least, What's NXT Live. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't decided on the NXT party officially. It's gonna, It would be difficult with the um, layout that we have. but Yeah, the, plus, I, uh, I feel like having questions from fans is better suited for when it's just me and you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, anyway. Probably everybody chime in and join the group chat or whatnot at the same time. In that vein, we have started putting out original content on Aftermatch Wrestling. We are getting ready to record another episode of the Rated R Rapport. We're going to be doing that with Owen, where we just fucking talk wrestling. Just mm -hmm. nothing's off limits. There is no format. Nothing is awful. Nothing official. <laughs> we don't even do plugs. Like, it's just like 30 minutes to an hour or more of talking weird wrestling shit and a lot of fucking controversy. A lot of fucking controversy. Seriously, if you want to talk wrestling controversy, go watch the old episodes of the Rated R Report. There's only like four of them. Um, so we'll be Plus doing the last one towards the end. It gets really uh, controversial. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So uh, help us on our drive to 100 subscribers. Uh, at 100, we feel like we could do it live really late on a Wednesday night, Thursday morning. And we might get a couple of people that can watch and ask us questions to yep. answer at the end. So uh, go to nodq.com for all your wrestling news and rumors. Go to nodq.com slash shirts to get wrestling t-shirts for nodq.com. I have one. It's orange. It's awesome. For the Birdman of Boston, Owen Finch. The soon-to-be former champion. I'm going to get that title back. For the general, Jerry Slaughter. I am, of course, the wizard of nodq, Stefan Osborne, and thanks for having a spot of NXT with us, and we will see you NXT time. Sure, yeah.